chapter number five. I'm going to need you to listen carefully for the first uh, five minutes or so. I'm going to preach really uh, a short message tonight that I believe will help you. And I want to preach tonight on the subject, what to do when you're in the battle. What to do when you're in the battle. No matter what battle you're in tonight, uh, this would be the thought from the Word of God. There's people in our church, there's people watching from home that are in battles. I've been through a few battles myself, and I found out what to do when you're in the battle. First Chronicles chapter number five, and uh, if you look with you, uh, uh, if you would please, and uh, all right, verse number twenty. Look at this, and they were helped against them, and the Hagarites were delivered into their hand, and all that were with them, with them, for they cried to God in the battle. You don't run from God. That ain't time to stay home, so I'm going to take a break from church. You cry to God when you're in the battle. And he was entreated of them because they put their trust in him. Amen. Now look on down. Let's skip on down there. See what kind of mess is in here. There's always in one kind of mess or, or, or another. And um, it said there, uh, oh, let's see. Verse number 25, and they transgressed against the God of their fathers and went a whoring after the gods of the people of the land whom God destroyed um, for them. Now, the, the, the weird thing is, is that um, they, they, they were having a, a battle here and the Bible said over there in other places that this war was of God. And tonight, I want to talk about what to do when you're in the battle. Listen carefully. Listen fast. I'm going to talk fast. Uh, the first thing I want to say tonight is why even read First Chronicles. I'll guarantee you 90% of the people in here have never read. Well, maybe our church is a good Bible reading church. But I've never read. Most churches, 95% of them have never read First Chronicles. You'll let the devil tell you that there's nothing in there for you. And it's all boring, and all it is is a bunch of names. And that's a lie of the devil. I'm going to prove it to you by way of introduction. So a long introduction, short message. Why read? Sad, sad, sad that most Christians do not read First Chronicles. Uh, you have never read it. They believe the devil's lies. They believe it's boring. They believe it's impossible to understand or benefit from. Uh, but, but, it's like this. A picture of life. First Chronicles is a picture of life, and it's like when you're digging for treasure. If you thought there was treasure out in the yard, uh, you you go out there and dig for it. Like over at that little house over there. Ain't no telling what we like. Ain't really. There ain't. A uh, man told me the other day, he was working at a house up in Marion and found $50,000 in a box buried where the old the time person that lived there had died and left. Of course, they done it right and made it right with the family and everything. 50,000 bucks, brother, cash. And you don't just, if that just been laying in the driveway, somebody would have got it. But you have to dig for treasure. You have to dig. You have to dig for gold. God put gold down in the ground so somebody, it don't just, you don't just walk up there and scoop it up and, and go spend it. You have to dig for it. And the same way as in your Bible, you have to dig. Sometimes you have to dig for great truth like we're going to see here tonight. Uh, you have to understand that. And it's a picture of life. Life. Good things don't just happen in life. You want a nice house? You got to work on it. You got to put weed killer around it. You got to weed it. You got to cut your grass. You want a nice car? You have to shine it and wash it and, and detail it and clean the tires. You know, well, everybody's got a nice clean car but me. It may not be new, but if it ain't clean, you know it's all it is. It's yours. And if you don't, if you, your Christian life's like that. Uh, it proves your desire, and your sincerity. I've heard two preachers say in the last few weeks, one, and I have a lot of respect for, I listen to him on YouTube once in a while, he don't believe exactly like we do, but he's a good preacher, and he said, on out, he said, uh, he said uh, now we ought to read the Bible regularly, he said, now I'm going to admit to you, I do not read the Bible every single day. And my jaw dropped. I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine a preacher that does not read the Bible every day. 
I, I can't even make a Christian at all. Really, honest. If you ain't got time to read it. He said, sometimes I travel and I'm in airports early in the morning. Yeah, and I got to be there two hours early. And yeah, you sit there for a blessed hour uh, while you're waiting. I, I always take my Bible on my little carry-on. And I sit there and prop my feet on my little carry-on. And I get my Bible out and read it. You can read your Bible every day. You make time for that little 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 bitty square God, you can make time to read your Bible every day. Say amen. That's right. And First Chronicles is like that. Uh, first Chronicles uh, is the first of two books by that name. And it's a book of public records. Listen to me. Of the kings of Judah, that would be the southern tribes, not the northern, for the most part. It has genealogies, births, deaths, Land grants, like at the courthouse. You know the courthouse? You can look up land grants. You can look up survey of land, who owns what property, excuse me, who's alive, who's dead, death certificate. That's the way First Chronicles is in the Bible. It's a, it's a record book of things that they, they were doing uh, back in those days. And God chose this because the kings of Judah, the, the Lord Jesus Christ, would come through that lineage. So it's important to God to put the lineage of His Son back there in First Chronicles. Then God allows those problem texts. Problem texts are verses in the Scripture that seem to contradict each other. Like, I don't know if you picked this up or not. Most of you probably have not. But there will be some places where it will say Solomon had 4,000 stall uh, of horses. And then in another place it will say he had 40,000 stall uh, the horses and a, a lot of that the Lord puts stuff like that in the Bible because skeptics can find something wrong with it if they want to somebody with a sincere heart studies it out and he'll he'll say he had 4,000 stalls uh, of, of horses or 40,000 horses but 4,000 stalls that would be 10 horses in each stall so if your heart's sincere you get it if you're a skeptic looking for fault you can find it. So God puts that stuff in First Chronicles to, sh to test the sincerity of the heart of a Bible student and prove the dishonesty of a Bible critic. So First Chronicles is extremely important. If you didn't have First Chronicles, you would never know about uh, dividing of the sons of Noah. When Noah's sons came out of the ark, Shem, Ham, Japheth, they went three different directions. Shem went East Asia, all of Asia Minor. Uh, Ham went south into Africa, and Japheth went north up into um, Europe, Norway, Sweden, all them really, really northern people like that, and that's where everybody in the world come from. Most people now are a mixture of one or more of those three boys, but that's or originally how the world was populated. That's right. And you'd never know that if you didn't read First Chronicles. That's why you don't know it. Uh, you don't read it. That's in chapter 1, uh, uh, 4, 5, 8, and 17. You'd never know about the prayer of Jabez. You'd never know about it. You said, what in the world the prayer of Jabez? Uh, see that? See that? Uh, Jabez made a great prayer. And that somebody wrote a book. Remember they wrote a book about it? Some of y'all, you remember the book they came out with, the prayer of Jabez? Anybody? I remember preaching on that uh, many years ago uh, uh, in Marion. And... Uh, Jabez come to the Lord one time and he said, Lord, enlarge my coast. Give me a blessing. And he set a biblical precedent. It is not wrong for you to say, Lord, I need a blessing. Help me. You learned that from the prayer of Jabez. That would be there uh, in, in, in First Chronicles. And then you learn about a song service in First Chronicles. You know, you know how come we have a little song service before the preaching? First Chronicles 5.31. You don't get that in the New Testament. It ain't in there. You know, uh, you ever heard old say Ed McAleese used to preach, fit for the fight. Men that are ready to go to battle. You know where that comes from? Chapter 7, verse 11. The Lord was with him. You hear people say, boy, the Lord comes from? Chapter 9, verse 20. You don't get that in Revelation or Matthew. David's mighty men 
Everybody in here needs to study David's mighty men. Man, some of them had a, a face like a lion. I mean, there were some bad dudes. I encourage all you young men, you study David's mighty men. Oh, David had a bunch of men around him like every preacher. Every preacher needs a bunch of men around him that are saying, bless God, preacher, let's go to war. And they were ready to fight. They were ready to draw their sword. One of them went down and slew a lion in a pit on a snowy day. That's some of the coolest uh, reading you'll ever. How I many of y'all know that story in the Bible? Raise your hand. You know the story. He went down in a pit, brother, when it was pouring the snow. And that's a bad dude, buddy. He'd take Hulk Hogan and break him in two like that right there. Of course, I could. The well, way he looks right now, bless his heart. Uh, but, I mean, in his prime. And you know what? i tell you something, brother. You, you never know. I like that son of that old, uh, that old guy. His name was. His name was Dodo, the son of uh, 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 Dodo, the son of uh, uh, Hohi. That was his name. That was his name. How'd you like that to be your name? Uh, uh, and uh, he, he had a sword, and his hand claimed to that sword. You get all that in these Old Testament books. How to fight? Uh, every preacher needs a bunch of men around him. They, the Bible said they helped him. Bible said they helped him. They didn't fight against him. They didn't. I, you know what I preach? I don't preach it here because I think y'all take it wrong. When I go to other churches, I preach the stuff and I say, listen, you back up your pastor. Y'all get together. You work in one mind, one accord. And you know what I tell them? I tell them, say, there's no meetings about the pastor without the pastor. Amen. I had to solve a many a church split. Get these little groups and we're going to have a meeting Monday night. But tell the pastor. We're going to all discuss some things. Yeah, yeah, you're full of the devil. That's what you are. Hey, ain't no meetings about the pastor without the pastor. That's right. Can't say it to his face. Don't say it. Right? Hey, man. Help me, mighty men. These are my mighty men. Uh, no, they're doing good. Oh, can y'all slew a line in a snowy day? Yes, sir. <laughs> hey, hey, that's right. DJ can slay, slay a line. Jaden, you can slay a line on a snowy day. Or you can come and cut weeds tomorrow evening like a man that's saved. All right. Uh, now, look. now, look. Listen here. This evening, you, you learned that. You learned about uh, understanding the times in chapter 12, verse 32. Understanding the times, y'all. Understanding signs of the times. You understand about this sound of the mulberry. You ever heard preachers preach? Boy, we wait till there's a sound of them stirring in the mulberry bushes. And most of y'all have no idea in the world what they're talking about. We're talking about like when the Holy Ghost starts moving, the Lord starts blessing. That comes out of 1 Chronicles, y'all. That comes out of 1 Chronicles chapter 14, verse 15. You don't know it because you don't read 1 Chronicles. You preachers that don't read the Bible every day ought to be ashamed of yourself. You'll eat, you'll feed that God every day. I guarantee you that. I ought to get in the book. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God shall man live. Hey Amen. This is God's book, brother. This is God's book. This is God's book. They, mwah, you ought to get it once in a while and just hug it and walk around the house and say, Lord, I love your word. It's a lamp to my feet. It's a light to my path. It'll do when I'm dying. Let it, Jesus comes. Amen. Let it go. That's right. And then we, we, we learn that story about where David danced before the Lord with all his might. And, you know, it wasn't like these weirdos on T TV. You ever seen them Pentecostal church where the preacher? That David, that ain't the way David danced. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. That ain't the way David danced, you nut. I mean, that ain't dancing for the Lord with all your might. Uh, that's barn dance on Saturday night. And, and it wasn't like and it wasn't like this waving down. Go, David, that ain't the way David danced. Here's the way David danced. Woo! Thank you, Lord! You give us the victory with all his might. That's right. And the Bible said Michael, his wife, I know somebody got another name, Michael. Uh, it's president. Uh, but it was. Uh, but anyway, uh, David's wife, Michael, uh, looked and she despised him in her heart. And she said, Poof. she made fun of her husband for shouting, how glorious was the king of Israel today. Uh, uncovered himself and said all the mates. She's jealous because all them young ladies in the group like David. And he's out there shouting, praising God. And she's looking at the woman and saying, ooh, ooh. And you know what the Lord did? He shut her womb up. She could never have no kids. You know where you get that? You get that from First Chronicles chapter number 15 and verse 29. Now if that's a picture of a church who despises old-fashioned shouting and worship. And the Lord shuts her womb up, and ain't nobody ever gets saved in a church like that. 
Any church that quenches the Holy Ghost and makes fun of people really want to shout and praise God, the Lord shuts their womb, brother. See, you'd never know that if you didn't read it. And then it said all kind of stuff like that. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the mighty men and all that. So they're in this battle here. And look at verse 25. Look at chapter number 5. And verse 25. Then I'll not have you turn anymore. I'll give you these three thoughts and I'll be done, really. It's going to be really quick. Look at uh, 1 Chronicles 5, 25. And look at what it said. Doesn't read that. Look 26. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Pul, king of Assyria, and the spirit of Tilgath, Penil, Pilneser, king of Assyria, and he carried them away, even the Reubenites and the Gadites and the high tribe of Manasseh. And, and it said, Brought them to Hala, Habar, and Hera to the river of Gozan unto this day. And it said this, see, God did this. So the first thing I want to say, three th quick things is, number one, the war was of God. You know who believes that nowadays? About 1% of Christians. People say, there's no way in the world God hates war. God would never start a war. God would never. Now, you're ignorant of the Bible. It's all the way through there. He's a God of war. When Jesus comes back at the, at, for the millennium in Revelation 19 verse 11, it said this. You know what it said there? It said in righteousness he doth judge and make war. He's a God of war. You say, Brother Danny, war is not of God. This one was. Now, that don't mean he liked it. That don't mean he approved of it. Here's the way God does. Let's just say all you people here are the children of Israel. All you people in this section right here, uh, right there to Kyle and Amanda, you first five, six, seven rows here, uh, are the children of Israel. And they're, they're worshiping other gods. They're doing wicked things. They quit reading the Bible. They quit going to church. And the Lord goes, huh, right here. So you know what he does? He stirs up. Of Tigger, Lilliger, Helen, and Benicer, whatever that guy's name was. And, and he said, Go get them. And the Lord uses their enemies to torture and mess with them and punish them. That's a biblical fact. That's a biblical fact. Now, look, you, you ain't going to convince me that all the stuff we're going through in America right now is not already the beginnings of God judging this country because we won't do right and put God first. You ain't going to get me to believe it fits too good with what the Bible, what they did in the Bible. I'm not saying we're Israel. I'm not saying America's. I, I don't, don't get weird on me. I, I am saying this. Blessed is the nation of God. And the wicked will be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. And I know we're suffering, brother, like never before. This war was of God. The truth is, many of the wars that me and you fight of, of our battlefields of our own making. You remember that song? You said, they were battlefields of my own making. We got ourselves into a mess. This war was their fault, and God caused it to whip them and straighten them up. It come for their own disobedience, and God has allowed us. Did you know, don't, don't get mad at me, God will allow bad stuff to happen in your life to correct you and whip you when you're not doing right or if you're deliberately sinning in your life. You hear me? You hear me? I don't care what somebody, I know somebody right now, oh, brother, no, brother Danny, your foot, brother. I didn't start doing this yesterday. I've had it happen to me. I've seen it happen to me. God will allow bad stuff to come in your life and a battle to deliberately rebuke you and whip you for what you're doing wrong. But if well, I've had it, I've, I've done things in my past years and years and years ago, and like within 30 minutes, bam, something happened. You ain't going to convince me that's an accident. It happens too many times. How many of y'all have ever yeah, done something wrong, you know, and it wasn't just a day or two? I, and you thought, know, right? Raise your hand. Everybody in here. Everybody in here. It's obvious. I mean, God did that. Oh, Brother Danny, we're in the New Testament. Our sins are in the blood. Yeah, in Hebrews in the New Testament. And he said he chastises every son whom he receiveth. He whips every one of his children. I, I've had preachers. I got some friends of mine up there in Tennessee. They believe different. I know a boy, good friend of mine. Uh, he's no longer alive, but he told me, he, he, he get off on his kick. Boys, be careful about this preaching of God ain't mad at you. Be careful about that. Be careful about that. That sounds good, but that's not exactly right all the time. That's not exactly, that's got a different kind of way. I know preachers that got off on that doctrine and everywhere they went, I said, God ain't mad at you. God ain't mad at you. 
And it makes it gives you the impression of, well, we fail every day. Oh, it don't it don't really matter because God don't see our sins anyway. That pre- preachers who preach that don't understand the difference between state and standing. They get it they get it confused in their head. Now look look your standing in Christ is perfect. God don't see nothing but the blood of Jesus. When He sees you, He sees the blood of the Lamb. Your state is ever how you happen to be living at any given certain time. Got nothing to do with your salvation. And buddy, if you don't think you're going to get whooped for what you do wrong in a backslidden state, you are smoking bad dope. I'm telling you, brother, He whips every one of His children. And if you, matter of fact, the Bible said, if you are without chastisement, you are a bastard and not a child. And that's what the Bible said. If you think I'm cussing, because you ain't too smart. If you say it's the wrong way, you are cussing. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's right. That's right. A lot of you say hell the wrong way you're cussing. You say damn the wrong way you're cussing. You Got to understand the context, right? Amen. Preach it, Brother Danny. Oh, he's not mad at me. He's not mad at me. Okay, okay. Here's Noah. He's standing outside. He's worked on it. We just had these shampoos. Noah, I'm trying to teach y'all to let your kids put your feet in the back of the seats. And put other trash in in our seats. We're going to let you pay the cleaning bill next time. All right, look here. Here's Noah. The flood's getting ready to come. The sky's getting dark. 120 years. Shoo. My feet's clean. It's these socks I've wore for about seven days in a row. Uh, I get them at the flea market and I just wear them to get a hole in them. Uh, that's right. Uh, but anyway, uh, listen, I, cursing is a man whose feet don't stink. Uh, look here. And you know what? Noah gets out there. The flood's getting ready to come. They're getting ready to drown the whole world. And Noah gets out there and he says, God's not mad at y'all. He loves you. You're awesome. Something good is going to happen to you. No. No. Something good wasn't going to happen. Amen. My shoes got holes in them too. One of the bus kids pointed it out. But it's because I'm going over to the house after I get through here tonight. Got a hole in it right there. But I love these shoes. And you know what? Listen. Listen. Cursed is a man that don't have a hole in his shoe once in a while. Amen. Anyway, we're not training sissies around here. I mean, I spiff up a little bit, but I got a lot of redneck in me. I'm telling you, I'm telling you God, sometimes you, oh, you, oh, Sodom and Gomorrah, the angel come down there. They didn't say, now, Lot, something good is going. They're trying to beat the door down. The perverts trying to beat the door in to rape them angels. And they didn't say, God's not mad at you. Well, he got a funny way of showing it. Fire fell out of the sky and burned every one of them up. If, I, if he ain't mad then, I sure hate for him to be mad at me. Say amen, people. You know what? I'm giving you sound doctrine from First Chronicles. A guy told me, he said, he said uh, Brother Danny, don't, don't preach that. God don't, God don't see our sin. I said, that's standing, brother. That's standing. He sees your state. He sees your state. You've got to get them two separate. So you've got to understand that. The war was of God. So look. I get this once in a while, and people get one mess right after another, after another, after another, after another, and they, they'll send me a text, or they'll put some post, y'all send it to me, and they'll say, why is all this happening to me? Well, we could start by quit drinking, quit drink, doing drugs, get a job, quit shacking up. That'd be a good place to start. Well, you can't say, no, I can't, but if it was me, that'd be where I'd start. I mean, if I've got one mess right after another, after another, you can't blame all that on the devil. Now, sometimes when you're living as good as you can, you still face battle and war that the devil's fight. I understand that. But sometimes they're battles of our own making. And the war was of God, brother. Amen. And you, you can't. A guy could come out here and he said, "You know what? God, nobody will give me a chance." And now my eyes busted, and I lost my license, and I just got out of jail. But why is God doing all this? To me? I don't know. I don't know if there's any hope for me like that. Wouldn't it kick in after a while? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. If you're always in a mess, or you're always... Look, I'm not saying it's God judging you if something's always wrong with you or something you're always losing your job. I'm not saying that. I'm in no position to say that. But I'm telling you, if it was me, I'd ask myself, am I doing something wrong? That'd be the first thing I'd do. And if you ain't, don't worry about it. 
If you ain't doing nothing wrong, no. If you're doing something wrong, quit it. If you can't quit, kick yourself around the block. That's what Rocky Ruckman said. He said, if it's wrong, quit it. If you can't quit, kick yourself around the block. That's bam, around the block. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, God, well, the war was of God. Uh, the war was God's judgment on sin. In first, uh, 2 Samuel 7, 14, it said, if he come, I will chasten him with the rod of men. I talked to uh, somebody the other day, and they was living in sin, and is living together with this man, and he's being mean to him. And this this girl says something like, she, she says something like, it's one mess right after another. He hits me. He cheats on me. He does it. I, I just don't understand. Why. You know what I told her? I said, he's God's belt. He is God's belt. The Lord's taking him and going, bam, and whipping you because you're saved and you know better. That's right. I mean, look, look, I might get the snot knocked out of me when I walk out there. I'm not saying everything that happened to you bad is God judging. I'm not, but sometimes it is. Sometimes it is. It sure is. If you keep having the same mess over and over and over and over, you might ought to consider God might be talking to you. Amen? Jerusalem is going to be judged because of sin and was because of sin. Now, what we do in the battle. What do you do in the battle? I'll say this and I'm through. If you're in a battle tonight, I'm going to show you one more verse of Scripture. Maybe you are fight, some of you are fighting a battle of sexual sin, lust. You say, how do you know? Because there's a lot of people in here tonight, and probably there's a bunch of you in here that are fighting a battle of lust. Here's what I'm going to show you what to do. Take your Bible and turn to Psalm 88. This is for everybody, the rest of you perfect people that never fight that battle. All you perfect hypocrites. Uh, Psalm 88. Look at Psalm 88, and we'll look here. You got a problem. I'm, I'm talking about with drugs. I'm talking about with alcohol. I'm talking about with anything that's wrong that you can't quit. Look at Psalm 88. And verse 1. Here's what you do in the battle. Psalm 88, 1. Verse 8, Psalm 88, 1. Oh Lord, oh God of my salvation, I have cried day and night before thee. Let my prayer come before thee. Incline thine ear unto me. That's what it said they did. It said them people got together and they cried unto God. Listen, people, if you got a problem, you young men, you young lady, you got something going on wrong in your life, you fool around with somebody you're not married to. You got some kind of little affair mentally or even physically at work. Here's what you better do. If you guys, you're in some kind of sexual sin, if you're full of lust and it's getting the best of you, you say, well, nobody's perfect. And it gets the best of you, you say, well, nobody's perfect. And it gets the best. You're headed for trouble, big boy. You're in trouble. You know what you better do? You better get in your closet and you better bow down before God and you better cry and say, oh, God. Oh, God. Help me. I'm in the battle. Lord God, I'm in the battle. Oh, God. Help me, Lord. I'm in the battle. And you keep crying that and crying that. And the Bible said God was entreated of them. God heard that cry. You can quit drinking. You can quit uh, suboxone. You can quit alcohol. You can quit smoking weed. You can quit being having a lustful, wicked thought. Now, ain't nobody praying. Well, everybody has wicked thoughts come through their mind. But you don't have to dwell on be dominated by it and controlled by it. You don't have to live like that. Sin ain't supposed to have the victory over us. We're supposed to have the victory over sin. Amen. I'll tell you what. I know, Brother Danny, I'm a sorry, good for nothing dog. But I'll tell you what I know I'd do. If I had a drug problem, I know what I'd do. I'd close myself up in the closet and get me a bottle of water and I'd beg God all day long to get me out of it. I'd do the same thing next day. And the next day, you lost your job, get, beg him, cry to God. Well, I went to the altar, and then I went right back and done it again. That, 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 ain't, that ain't enough. That ain't enough. You got to cry to God, brother. Now, I ain't talking about 30 seconds. I'm not talking about a minute. Look, if you break your arm, you'd have to go to the hospital and, and have it set or whatever, fixed. You'd have to miss a day's work. And if you're in some kind of sin, sometimes you got to take a day off and get in the woods and beg God to deliver you from that sin. That's right. Listen, God, God, 
God had already told uh, Nineveh, I don't want to do that again. I'll, I'll be like, yeah. Uh, Nineveh, you're going to be destroyed. The, the man with no legs preached to Nineveh. And he said, Nineveh, you're going to be destroyed. Yet 40 days, and Nineveh shall be over some. God done said it. You're dead. And Jonah went and told them, and them people got down on their knees, and they begged God. That I'm glad that's in the Bible. You read the book of Jonah? And the Bible said God spared that city. That's what you got to do. But if the Lord's done pronounced judgment on me, and he says, all right, June the 1st, Danny Castle's going to have something terrible happen to him, da, 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 and, and I know about it, I'm going to get down and I'm going to beg him, God, please, God, please. Well, God done said it. Hey, there's a guy in the Bible, God done said he's going to die. And he turned his face toward the wall and prayed and prayed and prayed. That's in the Old Testament. And God gave him 15 years. I'm on my third 15 years right now. Uh, that's right. Uh, God's been mighty good to me. I tell you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, you cry out to God. It changed his mind. You say, Brother Danny, God don't change your mind. He did with Nineveh. You know what he said? He repented. The Lord can't repent. He sure did. There you go. You don't read the Bible, do you? You think repentance means to turn from something sinful. Repentance means this. You're going this way. You turn around and go the other way. That's repentance. I just repented. Didn't have nothing to do with sin. And God was going to judge them. They repented. He said, okay, I ain't going to judge you. You can pave yourself a lot of trouble in life if you'll stay right with God and keep the sin out of your life that nobody else don't know about. And I'm specifically talking about your cell phone. It's easier to sin now than it's ever been before. And what that does, that cell phone stirs up lust in you to where you can't even see a woman at work or nowhere without having a wicked thought. And the first thing you know, you're going to be acting on that. And you can't handle it, and I can't handle it, and nobody else can. There's been better, stronger men than any of us went down the tube because they thought they could play with sin. You better get in your closet and cry to God. You're in the battle. Cry to God for your marriage. Cry to God for your sickness. Cry to God for your job. We're going to win. We might not win at all the battle down here, but thank God we're going to win one day by the grace of God. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. Yes, we shall wear a crown. And when the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Don't quit fighting. He always calls us up to triumph. I've been fighting the battle for a long time. Come on, girls, sing a song. I've been fighting this battle a long time, y'all. A long time. You say, Brother Danny, you ever get tired of fighting? Yes, sir, I sure have. Sometimes I felt like I was on my back doing it like this. And the devil just beating my nose. And the, but something down inside just said, keep fighting. Keep fighting. What to do when you're in a battle? You just keep fighting. You just keep fighting. You, you, the devil can't do nothing with somebody that won't quit fighting. God bless you. Let's stand and pray. Father, help us tonight. God, help every one of us, especially those of us who have made battlefields of our own making. God, to do some business with you tonight, whoever this is for tonight, God, speak to their heart and all of us to fight the battle and win. In Jesus' name, amen. Sing it, girls. We're going to sing just about a couple minutes. We're going to go. God bless you. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Get in this altar tonight. Don't be embarrassed. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. We all fight these battles. Let's get in this altar tonight. Amen. 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 Glory. Glory. Amen. Teenagers, young lady, young man, say, I eat.
chainsaws, chainsaws, weed eaters. Um, look, just bring everything you got. Anybody that's ever done much work knows when you go do a job, what the one tool you don't bring, that's one you're going to need. So just throw your tools in there and bring them. Everything you can think, oh, I won't need, to. yeah, well, you know, if you ever done much work, I've been a part of a bunch of building programs. And I hear that all the time, I, I didn't know I was going to need that. Yeah, we are. Uh, that's what tools are for. So, uh, 